say. I, I'm not a I'm not a blame person though, but so many people are. It just. Ha- but I think that's all happens. part of ego, right? Oh, I see what you're saying. See, right. I'm tying that into right, ego right, right. that we blame ourselves for things sometimes when it really had no bearing. Our, we right. we like to think that we have yeah we, we have an effect on every right. single thing in our world, but we don't. No, we don't. No, I agree and I don't want that. to. Have you ever read that book by Louise Hay called Heal? You can heal yourself. You heal can, your life. There's, there's a lot of them. I knew that there, was she a... has so many titles, but yes, that's one of them. That's one of them. Louise Hay, it's Hay, right? Not right. Hayes. Right. Is a wonderful, amazing author, and she has all kinds of books about tons and tons. how to heal yourself. And it's very spot on. I mean, it's super good information. If anybody's looking for some some self help, some guidance ways to heal your past, things like that. Louise Hay, look her up. She's amazing. You know, everything that you talked about today would really help me in my Reiki too. You know, and actually, that's funny you brought up Louise Hay because I had another person I was speaking to about this this morning and they said, have you ever seen Louise Hay's chart for emotions tied Uh, to different pains? So she actually has a chart in one of her books. You could probably Google. I think it's that one. Louise Hay chart Mm -hmm. and that would come up. But yeah, cool. All right. So now I'm shifting a little because now that was all about emotional attachment for pains. This is more organ related. So this is more what I've learned through the Chinese meridians and acupuncture and all of these different things. Um, I am not an acupuncturist, just saying, but I have learned these things because uh, they help me to help other people. The points, the, right? The points right. and the reflexology. So organs. When you are having liver or gallbladder dysfunction, that is usually anger, resentment, and frustration. And I can see that. And a lot of people have problems with gallbladder and liver in this world. Mm-hmm. And they're very angry. I mean, we hold a lot of anger. And where does your anger hold? It's in that organ system, according to Chinese medicine. So that's very interesting. The heart and the small intestines have to Mm. do with joy, joyfulness. Ah, How you get butterflies in your stomach from... Yeah. Ah, Isn't that And your heart flutters. Yes, but joy can actually cause the heart disruption. Like sometimes we get so joyful that we get hyper... Uh, extended like our heart just starts racing and we start having all of this you know sweat and and uh you know anxiety and insomnia because we're so excited about what we're going to do tomorrow and and so that can be a good thing or a bad thing um you know anything in moderation is good but too much joy could actually be which is a weird concept yeah could be detrimental but it's because of our human body our human body can't take so you so much. So if you're time. that joyous, you need to suppress it a little bit. Um, just be aware. <laughs> just be aware. Yeah. Um, spleen and stomach is overthinking or melancholy, sadness. Hmm. Spleen and stomach. And we've talked a lot about the spleen. I'm a big spleen advocate. If uh if my husband would let me, I would be a spleen cheerleader. I would profess all over the world how important and how wonderful our spleens are. I could embroider a spleen on your shirt. Could you? Yeah. I saw on (laughs) Facebook one time they had these little plush spleen animals, but they weren't animals. They were organs. I'm like, I just love that spleen one. Why doesn't somebody buy that for me? (laughs) All I want for Christmas is a spleen. That's all. That's all. (laughs) Oh, he's, he's like scarecrow. Yeah. I was just going to say my scarecrow wants a brain, (laughs) but yes. So, you know, that when we're sad all the time, when we're pensive, pensiveness, what is pensiveness? Pensiveness is overthinking and just being melancholy and blue and, and, and dwelling in that energy. Seeing like the dark, bad side of everything instead of the good. Yes. That affects our spleen and our stomach. Um, Lungs and large intestine is grief and anxiety. So grief. Have you ever, 
Okay, like one time, I'll never forget, I got a call that my papa died. And I quit breathing. Mm -hmm. Like I literally crumpled to the floor. My husband was standing there. He was scared to death. He's like, oh my God, what happened? He didn't know what news I had just gotten. And I just lost it. I couldn't breathe. My chest tightened up. I felt like, uh, I felt Mm -hmm. like just, at, you know, like the worst asthmatic episode ever. And I just crumpled because I couldn't breathe. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see that. That was just, it was overwhelming for me. And a lot of times when we get anxious or upset, we stop breathing. And we don't even know we're doing that. And we literally stop breathing. A lot of people, when they get on my table, when I hit a point that hurts, they yeah. stop breathing. Right. And I have to tell them, breathe, breathe. And that seems like such a stupid thing to say to someone. It's like, of course I'm going to breathe. <laughs> Eventually I'm going to breathe. But no, you need to be mindful of what you're doing right now physically. And what you're doing is holding your breath. You need to breathe. Breathe and let it, let it go. So I tell people like the whole time and I don't tell them relax. I think that's funny. You know, like, like if something hurts and you tell somebody to relax, really? (laughs) So I tell them to breathe. Right. Just breathe. breathe, Relax. Breathe. Yes. You tell them to relax and they're like, you're poking me in a spot. That hurts. How am I going to breathe? Or how am I going to relax? All right. Um, kidney and bladder is fear. And, you know, I can remember, this is kind of a personal thing, not that y'all haven't heard personal things from me on here before, but I can remember as a child, I would get stage fright and I loved drama. You can't tell, but I was a thespian. I loved to act. So I was in stage plays from the time we lived in Adrian, Michigan, which is known for the Croswell Opera House, one of the original opera houses in Michigan. It's a historical place, um, landmark. I've been in that theater. I grew up in that theater from the time I was, I think I was three years old when I was in my first play. And I loved doing plays. And I was in, uh, you know, all the summer musicals and everything growing up. And every time I would go out opening night, I would tinkle. I would tinkle myself. Uh (laughs) It was terrible. And I would know because I would get so scared. And it didn't matter if I just went because I would go because my mom would be like, you got to go. You got to go on stage. You got to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. But then I would get up there and I would get scared and I would tinkle just a little bit, but I was like, oh man, you know, and then it'd psych me out and then I'd have to pull it together and then I'd have to walk (laughs) on stage. But yeah, it was like, that is connected. I can see how those Uh things are connected. Me too. So that's very interesting. And you know, a lot of people, yes, there is such a thing as breakdown of matter and bladders get deteriorated and musculature gets weaker and the older we get things are dropping and I understand that but I think the elderly especially have a lot of fears I think they're fearful of dying some of them I think some of them are fearful that that they're you know not going to see their grandkids grow up I think some are fearful that they don't have enough money to live on I think they're fearful that you know they're weak now um Men, in particular, get to this certain age and they know all of a sudden they're physically weaker than they used to be. And that is scary to them. You know, we've all had that moment where you realize that your children are bigger and stronger and faster and more agile. And they probably could take you out (laughs) if they wanted to. If they so choose to do that, they probably could do that. That's right. Now, hopefully that would never happen, well, yeah. but I feel like a lot of older people, once they start to reach an age where they're weak and their body is not what they want it to be anymore and they see their shortcomings, they get fearful. So they start to lose continence. 
you know, they start to have that weakness in the bladder and in the kidneys. And, you know, a lot of older people have problems with their urinary function. And I feel like a lot of that is the fears that are piling up on them. Mm, I can see that. Later. It makes me want to go home and do my Kegels. It makes me want to go pee. I want to go pee now. Can we take a break, Deb? No, I'm just kidding. We're good. No, Julia. We're good. We're good. So, yeah. So those were interesting. That's That's very interesting. That's what I wanted to talk about today. I just wanted to talk about things because I always talk about physical. Um, Sometimes I talk about trauma. Sometimes I talk about organ referral. But some of this is intangible, people. Some of this nobody can fix for you but you. And that's the work that we have to do. You know, you are commissioned in this world to make yourself a better person. And to do that, first of all, you have to engage with yourself. You can't just put blinders on and call it good and think, oh, I'm just going to fly on autopilot and not deal with all this mess around me or all this good around me or whatever's around you. Because when you put blinders on to what's going on around you, not only are you blocking out the negative, but you're blocking out the positive. Very good point. And you're not noticing these little signs that tell you you're doing things right and you're moving in the right direction. You don't even see them because you're blocking everything out. So you need to first be mindful. You need to open your mind up. You need to be aware, not only of what's going on around you, but how you're reacting to it. How is my gut reacting to it? How is my brain reacting to it? How am I sleeping? How am I eating? What am I doing that is a reaction to the environment around me? So you need to be aware. You need to be conscious of that. So first things first, you need to be aware. Then you need to recognize when there's a trigger that causes you dysfunction, that causes you to go into your weird, bad, sick patterns, whatever they may be. You recognize it. Then this is the toughest part for people. You have to accept it. You have to accept it, that it is affecting you and that that is a problem. And then you move on. And moving on means you either try to correct it or you try to learn more about that aspect, whatever it may be. Or you just forgive yourself and move on. Boy, that's huge. Forgive yeah. yourself. Yeah. And that's that's hard for some people. It is. You know, and so so many of it, I, I agree wholeheartedly with everything you said. And we take ourselves too seriously too much, too often, too. It, we forgot how uh, it was not to have all that burden on us. And mm-hmm. we don't play enough. I know. And if you take away... If all the learned stuff, how we have to be really good and we have to get good grades and we have to please this person and it, you come back to what you said in the very beginning, you, you have to please yourself first. Mm-hmm. And that means being able to laugh, being able to have fun, to gift yourself the friends that lift you up. You know, it's everything is up to you in the big picture. It's all up to you. Your life is in your hands. Mm -hmm. You can either choose the spiral downward or the climb up. You know, it's up to you. And that's what it all boils down to. And to trust your instincts, trust your gut to know. Yes, and it has to be conscious effort. Right. Autopilot doesn't cut it forever. No. You have to have conscious effort effort in order to be happy. It doesn't just happen because life is cyclic in nature. What goes up always comes down and what goes down always goes back up. So if I was dependent on my outward, on my environment for my happiness, I'm only going to be happy 50% of the time. And that's not good enough. I'm not okay with that. Mm Mm-mm. I'm not okay with that. Yep. And I just, it's so funny how today is panning out because this morning I have a lady that's doing my challenge. Mm, cool. And that's what today's lesson was. Is it how really? How you're responsible for your own joy, your own happiness. And 
I suggested that she do something every morning when you first start out your day to develop a, a ritual of joy and to do something that makes you happy. And it all started, it's all based on the first thing my dad used to say to my mom every morning was good morning.